When Samuel, the last great judge of the Israelites, saw old age had come upon him, he made his sons judges over the people. But his sons had not their father's virtue and were corrupted by their love of riches. Then the elders of Israel gathered together and asked of Samuel that he appoint a king who would govern them as other nations were governed. Although Samuel warned them of the many burdens the king may impose upon his subjects, the elders insisted. Thus it was that Samuel, obedient to the voice of the Lord, anointed Saul, the tribe of Benjamin, as king of Israel. Then Saul, leading the Israelites, fought against their enemies on every side. Against Moab, against the Ammonites, against Edom, against the kings of Zophah, and the Philistines, and he defeated them. But as Saul's authority grew stronger, so did his ambition flourish. And he began to be disobedient to the voice of the Lord. So Samuel went again to Saul. Pass it well, Abdon. Samuel is here. Samuel. Samuel! 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 Long life to you, Samuel! God be with you, Samuel! Ah, what a happy day, Samuel. You bring the Lord's blessing on our victory. May you also be blessed. Honor the house of your soul. Come in. Come in and rest. You must be tired. The orders of the Lord have been carried out, Samuel. Don't be afraid. Come in. Have they? Those animals were taken from the Amalekites. The people saved the best to be sacrificed here in Gilgal before the sacred ark. We do that. Yes, sir. The orders of the Lord have not been carried out. Destroy all living creatures in Amalek, men and animals alike. Put them to death. That is what the Lord said. I've already told you, the animals will be sacrificed here in Gilgal. And do you think that is enough to excuse your disobedience? I was afraid of my own people. I humored them. And the king? Was it the people who spared the king of Amalek? Or was it your pride that forced you to make a show of your defeated enemy? Remember to whom you're speaking, son. Why don't you remember, Saul, what you were before God anointed you king of his people? Ah. But now you no longer listen to the voice of God. The voice of God or yours? Oh, come, Samuel. No need to be so hard. I have sinned, I admit. I've transgressed the Lord's will. Come. We'll go together and pray to the Lord. And you will plead for me. No, I won't go with you. I won't be your accomplice, Saul. You have rejected the Lord's command, and he has rejected you. You will no longer be king of Israel. and given it to another who is more worthy. Tell me who it is, son. His name. This other. Better than me. Tell me his name. 
You are already starting to torment yourself. Tell me his name. I don't know. But I know that day by day, you will see him growing under your very eyes. And you will grow smaller. And smaller. Any news? Yes. The first guards have been marching since dawn, and the Philistines have made camp on the plateau overlooking the valley of the Terebinth. Right. Have our camp set up on the heights opposite to them. Mm-hmm. Stop! Me. Come back here, you little vagabond! Just let me get my hands on you! I'll teach you! Now then! <clears throat> I've caught him, my lord. He's been stealing your grain, and his sheep have been feeding off it ever since we left Carmel. They've grown fat on your corn. <laughs> I've had my eye on him all along, the little thief. It's not true. I'm not a thief. We are only following the army to pick up the leftovers. Anyway, I only have seven sheep. How much can seven little sheep eat, my lord? This yours? Yes, but he took it away. Yes, I took it away because he insists on waiting till the middle of the night to play his harp just when I'm sleeping soundly. But you always say you work so hard you never sleep. That's right, of course. What I mean to say is I wasn't thinking of my rest, but I was only worried that he might disturb you, my lord. So you're the one who's been taking over the rooster's job every morning? Yes. will testify to the love I bear your father. I risked my life for him a thousand times in battle, but now we're all cowards. Abner, all of us. If only one of us had the courage to face Goliath. That would be suicide. The Philistines are just waiting for us to move. That's all they want. You see, in the Valley of the Terebinth, whoever attacks first is lost. And the Philistines know that very well. Oh, Goliath is just... A pretense, a bait. Yes, what is it? A boy, a shepherd, wants to speak to the king. He claims to be in his service. Whip him. Wait. You know that shepherd. He's the boy who plays the harp. Oh, yes. Send him away. Abner, remember the last time? That boy played his song and calmed my father. He was better off then than he is now. Take up your arms and fight. If you're worthy to be called men, Thank you, my lord. Go in quietly. Uh -huh. As soon as you're inside, start playing softly, just as you did the other time. But if he gets angry, 
Stop playing and leave right away. A boy. All that is left of the courage of Israel is left in the simple heart of a boy. <laughs> oh, shameful. Shame, O oh Israel, with no man to defend her. They send me a boy. My lord. My lord. I used to watch over my father's flock, and if a lion or bear came and carried off one of my lambs, I would chase him and snatch the prey from his jaws. If he attacked me, I'd take a stone and fit it into my sling, and then I would smite him. That's how I slew him. And I will kill this Goliath, the Philistine, in the same way. The same God who protected me against the lion and the bear will protect me against this Philistine, and I will slay him. <laughs> Who are you? You're my son. No. No, your soul. You're the ghost of my boyhood come to mock me. I can't walk with this armor. I'm not used to it. 
Let me fight my own way, please. With my own weapons. of Israel in the hands of a little shepherd boy. Yes, but it's a useless sacrifice. No, not a useless sacrifice. An act of faith. Faith. That is what I saw in that boy's eyes. In all your faces I saw distrust and doubt. Even in my son. to answer your challenge. In the name of Jehovah, God of the hosts of Israel. You, they sent you to answer my challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you all hear that, comrades? I asked for a man to fight with me. And they sent me a boy. <laughs> Not even that. <laughs> it's a girl. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> Jehovah's put you in my hands. What are you going to do? You think I'm a dog? Is that why you've got your stones? You're worse than a dog. I'll kill you. I'll cut off your head and leave your body behind for the birds and the wild beasts. Yeah. Then the whole world will yeah. know that uh -huh. Israel has a god. <laughs>
understand. I and all the people of Israel should kneel before you. Today, you have proved that there is a God of Israel. Through you, he has delivered our enemies into our hands. And we pursued them to the very gates of Gath and Ekron. I don't even know whose son you are. I am the son of your servant, Jesse, of Bethlehem. Ah, I know, I know. People hailed you by the name of David. David means to lead and to command. And that is what I will call you. I will be David in the name of Saul, my lord and king. Abner, go out. Let me embrace you, David. Thank you for everything you have done for our people and for my father. for you. Your promised bride will be impatiently waiting. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise it'll be when the king sees not 100, but 200 Philistines. David, maybe you should ask Saul for two of his daughters, since he's so willing to pay 100 Philistines for only one. <laughs> <laughs> good for burying your son. And then, what do you do with them? You send them into battle. And when the Lord protects them and saves their lives, then you humiliate them by making them serve an outsider. He's no longer an outsider. Because you brought him into your family. You're giving him your daughter in marriage to him, a mere shepherd. A shepherd? What was I when I first and met And he you? can't even pay you a decent dowry. Oh, but you're always so generous with David. You have no money for the dowry? Well, what of it? Just kill some Philistines. Some Philistines? Uh, a hundred. Uh, <laughs> a hundred. And so you thought... That's enough. That's enough. Enough. Why don't you say these things to your son? Have you ever tried talking to him in this way? To belittle this hero? This shepherd? Have you seen our daughter look at this shepherd? <laughs> and my soldiers. My soldiers would, would give their lives for him. And the people, the people would let themselves be trampled under his horse's hoofs just to touch the strap of his stirrups. And you want me, the only one in all this world, to oppose him? I never dreamed you were afraid of him. You're really afraid of him. Oh, go away. Go on, get out of here.
I come, my lord, to bring the news that your glorious Captain David may Jehovah protect him. I sent Ishel to announce his early victorious return from the mission you ordered him to perform. <laughs> May Jehovah protect him. May Jehovah protect him. <laughs> you old hypocrite. I put him in command of the army, replacing you. You can't forgive him for that, can you? Have you any more orders for me, my lord? Yes. Your lord orders you to sing and dance and make music for the happy news you brought me. In other words, go where you like and cut your throat. Leave me in peace. Hello, Afidon. Don't go. I need you. comes back. Always. No Philistine sword is quick enough. No arrow so swift. isn't good for you. But it is, Abner. It's good for me. It dims the sight. And yet it clears the mind. Hey, Abner. The mind. may seem indistinct. Remember, Abner, when we were marching against Zoba, in the midst of the battle, I fell off my horse, and the whole world seemed to spin around me, and a thick fog came over my eyes. And you and Jonathan saved me. Well, since then, since then the sickness has happened again and again. I wonder if my arm can still wield an axe.
David! Welcome back. Well, why do you stand there, my boy? Don't you like the way I play your harp? Ha, ha! Come on, my boy. Come in, come in. My lord, I bring you the price you ask for the hand of your daughter, Mica. Not one hundred, but two hundred Philistines will never again take up the sword against you. I knew you would succeed. I might have guessed that you would surpass my every expectation. He brings me double the dowry I asked for. But I can still give you only one daughter. What a pity I didn't fatten her up to weigh twice as much to match your double heroism. <laughs> Sometimes, my boy, I suspect that everything about you is double. The glory of the king is always worthy of a double effort from his humble servant. Fine, fine. Then you should try to achieve the double of the double. And then the double of the double of the double, and so on and on and on. Always the double. Ho, ho, poor David. What labors await you? It's so long since I heard your sweet voice and the sound of your melodious harp. Come, sing for me. Now, Saul? Sing for me. Your song will bring more joy to my heart than the sound of your victory. I am tired, my lord. I have just returned from the land of the five cities. Sing something for the tired heart of old Saul. Sing. But my lord, sing. Don't you see he's sick? He often treats me worse than that. And I am his own son. Micah, come in. David. Oh, David. I was so frightened for you. David, you mustn't be upset by father. No matter what happens, David, I'll be at your side, even, even against his will. I love you, David. No, Micah. 
I would never set you against your own father. I love you both too much to ever come between you. Does my father's consent mean more to you than my love? What are you saying, my daughter? Then tell me, David. Do you love me? Really? Don't worry, it's nothing. Just a game. Lizzie Adlin. Ha-ha! Your turn. Your last chance. I give up. I will never be able to beat you. Never mind, my boy. Glad you won. Won. He lets me win. He treats me like a child. <laughs> Be quiet, 
but you'll wake the whole palace. Oh, look, Patty. Wait till you see how happy your father will be when he hears about the joke that we played on the Philistine. <laughs> there you are, David. Ah. Well, get some rest, Jonathan. We have all earned it. We can report to the king tomorrow. Good night. Well, my lord, do you want to hear my report? I suppose that's why you sent for me. I'm slain. I'll make the human mind a tear. Come in, boys. Come over here where I can see you. There were only 30 of us, against more than 200. The entire garrison of Azika. And we killed every last one. Sit down, boy. You are a very able young man. You are gifted with weapons and with words. You write beautiful poems, and you compose celestial music. Your soul has many pages. All of them at your service, my lord. Are they? David. David? Tell me about Samuel. About Samuel? Yes. Tell me about Samuel. It's all right, David. I've known everything for a long time. I know that you see him often. I know that he guides your every step. That's why I took you into my service, under my protection. <laughs> you see, you don't have to pretend anymore. I've had enough of this old grudge against Samuel. It doesn't help anybody. Only you can make us friends again. He's as fond of you as I am. I chose you because he chose you. Do you suppose I would put you at the head of my army, made you one of my family, if I hadn't always known that Samuel had chosen you to be my heir? The anointed king of Israel. These are great plans for you. You should study the stars. Try to discover how and when Jehovah has arranged for me to die. <laughs> You're very talkative tonight. Uh, I don't understand, Saul. How well? Go to bed. My daughter is waiting for you.
Let me look at you. Your hair. Your eyes. I'd forgotten how lovely you are. Why have you deceived me? Uh, you'll find out the kind of man he is. And for this man, you've turned against your father. Tell me where you were. Come with me. We can be seen here. front of Samuel, he tore his clothes and began to pray, to ask God's forgiveness. He was calling for you. Now he is a changed person. Tomorrow, for the Feast of the New Moon, he wants you at his table, because we're all going to celebrate the annual sacrifice together. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? As sure as there is a God, Jonathan. There is only one short step between me and death. I've done a lot of thinking during these days I've been alone. You know what they're saying about me, the reasons for your father's jealousy. I understand him. I can see why he is tormented and angry. I'll tell you something more. Perhaps he behaved this way not for selfish reasons, but for you, for his sons. But I, I have to be on my guard. And I'm not sure yet that I'm safe. What do you want me to do? Tell your father I'll come. But I'll stay 
hidden in the country. When Saul asks for me, tell him that at the last minute I went instead to Bethlehem for the annual sacrifice, preferring to be with my family. If he doesn't get angry, then that will be a sign that everything is all right. Then you can come and get me. But if Saul has another outburst of rage, what's to be done? Then I leave here forever. I have no choice. Hasn't David come yet? Hey! Uh, David is not coming. He asked me if he could go to Bethlehem. He, he wanted to make the annual sacrifice with his family. His family? Aren't we his family? You wouldn't think so, the way we treat him sometimes. You... You think I don't know you're the friend of David? To the shame of your mother and your own dishonor? But Father... You're a fool! As long as David lives, there's no safety for you. Or for your reign. It's not true. You don't know what you're saying. Go find him. Bring him here. Why? He hasn't done anything. What? You're lying. Let me go! Let me go! I'll kill him! Kill him! Get up and put your hands on your head. Hey, didn't you hear me? I told you to get up and put your hands on your head. Come on, hurry up. I beg your pardon. But if I obey you, my rabbit will be ruined. I had to chase it all day before I caught it. Aren't you hungry? Sit down. There's enough for two. Hey, are you one of us? Too well dressed. Am I? Can clothes be stolen? <laughs> How much for that? You can take it. It's a present. Oh, it's a present. Heavy, isn't it? Oh, Heath. Ah, I know who you are. That Goliath sword that was in the temple of Nob. 
Everybody knows that you ran away from Saul, that you went to the priests of Nob, that Ahimelech gave you bread and Goliath's sword. Ah, David, you are David. Listen, Jehovah brought us together. You don't know who I am. Ask anybody who Isaac the thief is. He has the cunningest head in all Israel. You see, there's just one thing I need that I don't have. A strong arm. Uh, I'm getting old. Listen to me, David. Let's work together, huh? A sword like that. And a head like this. Yeah. Who could stop us? Huh? Let's just have a look. David, let's do it this way. You attack them first. And then I'll... I'm a liar, a thief, an outlaw. Does anyone else want to follow Joab and the others into David's camp of brigands? Not one of you warned me of the plots going on behind my back. Not even in my own household, my own family. My lord, the priests of Nob are here. For me and my whole household, my lord king, we have obeyed. Noeg, tell him what you have already told me. What did you see? I was in Nob, the city of the priests, when David, the son of Jesse, came to Ahimelech, and Ahimelech consulted the Lord for him and provided him with the food for his trip and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Doeg, a stranger of the tribe of Edom, more loyal than my own son. Why have you plotted against me with the son of Jesse? You fed him armed him, helped him to rebel. And how was I to know? Isn't David the most loyal of your servants, honored in your own house, captain of your army? Since when has it been a crime to help him? I have consulted the Lord for him a hundred times. Lies won't help you. Don't accuse me and my household of a crime we didn't commit. But you were seen. I have nothing to hide. David came in your name. He asked for bread. Listen to me, Elkimelech. I know whose orders you carried out to help David. Samuel. He's always protecting you. The same old story. The same old lies. Taking refuge behind the Lord. And I've had enough. Because you betrayed your king, you and your household, will now die. 
I'm not. So, you can't do this. I'm not. Archers! Father! What are you waiting for? Put them to death! They won't obey you, so. Put them to death! Doeg, you haven't such reverence for these traitors. You put them to death. not enter the palace with the others. So now I'm all alone. The only one. I'm almost ashamed. Then Saul descended on Nob. Burned every house to the ground. The temple. And now he's hunting you everywhere. Abiathar, stay here with us. You can help us. You will consult the Lord for us, asking him to protect my life and the lives of my companions. On your knees and stay there! We caught them down in the valley. They're two or four spies. No, my lord, no. We're not spies. Cut your sneaky up to the cave. Yes, my lord, that's right, but... Of course it's right. You are spies. No, no, we're not spies. He's lying. He is a spy. Speak. We're from Keile, my lord. We're peasants. Peace-loving peasants, my lord. 
Yesterday, our country was invaded by the Philistines. They're like locusts, my lord, locusts. They pillaged and plundered our fields, our harvest, our poor harvest. My lord, only you can help us. Only you can chase these heathen dogs from our homes, as you have done a thousand times before. We beg you, my lord. We are from Kaili. Yes, We're peasants. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. Joab, get ready to march. We leave immediately. At dawn, we'll be in Kaili. But, David, we've only just arrived, and we need some rest. As if we hadn't enough troubles of our own. Why should we take on any more? They're big enough to take care of themselves. We can't fight Saul, and Saul's enemies too. Because of your rebellion, we've had to flee our homes. Our only fault was that we were your brothers, sons of the same mother. Now what do you want us to do? Listen to me. All of you. Listen to me. Never let it be said that the son of Jesse left the house of Saul to wage war on Saul. David has spent his life and strength defending Israel against its enemies. And he'll keep right on doing it. And now, in the name of Jehovah, on to Kaila. On to Kaila! And chased the Philistines out of Kaila, my lord. He freed the city, my lord. And now he's resting there with all his men. The city has only one gate, my lord. On the side where the sun rises. How many are there? I'd say 500 at the most. The Lord has delivered him into my hands. He shut himself up in the city with a gate and bars. To Keile. To Keile! running away like this. It's been years now. David has sent us. We haven't touched your flocks. We've protected them for you. Now we've come to ask. What do you do? Huh? Who are you? Who is David? I've never seen you before. I never asked for your protection. I'm not in the habit of giving payment or hospitality to strangers who come from the Lord knows where. Go tell your David that Nabal's not afraid of him. I'm not a slave who has fled his master. You can tell him that too. Come on, we wasted enough time here. <laughs> 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 He chased them away, Abigail. What did they want? Something to eat. They were David's men. He's a stupid fool. He shouldn't have done that. Doesn't he realize what it can cost us? I'm Abigail. It was my fault, my lord. My fault. Take no notice of what my fool of a husband said. Unfortunately, I didn't see your men in time. Please, forgive your servant's mistake and accept a fair recompense for, for the watch that you have kept over our flocks. <sighs> Blessings to Jehovah, God of Israel, who has sent you to me. If you hadn't come to tell me this, I assure you, none of you would be alive now. My men will help yours unload the ass. Joab! Joab! Jehovah has rewarded you, 
and has given you a home again. Remember your son. Come on, wake up, you fools! We could have been butchered in our sleep when you wouldn't have noticed it! Wake up! Get up! Why be angry with that, Abner? Weren't you asleep, too? An ordinary man comes and threatens the life of your king, and you sleep! You deserve to be put to death for that! <laughs> Look around you, Abner! Where are the king's lands and jobs? Where are they? Have you found them? I am here, Abner! Here! Soon it will be day, then I'll put you. Take cover, my lord. Quickly. Stop where you are. Don't move. Here are the lands and the jug, Abner. Come and get them. David. Yes, my king. I have come to ask you. Why you persist in pursuing your servant? For years, you have been chasing me as you hunt down the wild birds in the mountains. So, you will force me to serve a foreign god. I've been a fool. I'll never harm you again. You are the better man. Tonight, the Lord placed me at your mercy, and you spared me. 
I spared you twice. Remember, Saul? Once in the cave at Ain Gidai, when I cut a piece from your throat, and again tonight, I took pity on you. I said to myself, I will not raise my hand against my king, because he is the anointed of the Lord. Wickedness, Saul, comes from the wicked. True. True. Now I know that you're a good and just man. You will be king of Israel. The people will prosper under your rule. I am sure of it, David. Only come back, David. I'll do you no harm. Only promise not to wipe out my family. Treat them with mercy, David, when you are king. Just listen snake. We should have nailed him with his own lance. The Lord will reward each of us according to our faith and our loyalty, Saul. David. David. You said it, Jonathan. You always said it. The dearest of my sons, the strongest support of my kingdom. How could I? He didn't trust me. You know, Jonathan, he didn't trust me. I suppose I was to blame. But I lied to him a hundred times. You'll see, Father. He'll come back. Will he? Yes, sir. Will he? Yes. It will get cold. He'll come back. Why are you still lying? Why don't you tell him that David is with the Philistines? Hmm? Oh, you think you hate him? Uh, you're bitter because he married Abigail. Listen, Father. David is your enemy. He will fight against you. But you still love him. He's lied all his life. You were right. He married me only to get your throne. Yeah, but you still love him. So, yeah. your daughter is telling the truth. For some time now, David has been in the service of the Prince of Gath. And now the Philistines are marching against us. David, you'll feel better. David, David will come back. He'll come back. Yes, he'll come back. He is already on his way. But he'll take your place, just as Samuel said he would. Samuel? Oh, uh, Samuel's dead. I'm alive. I'm still king of Israel. So, you are no longer a king. God has abandoned you. You have disobeyed his orders, killed his priests. God doesn't listen to you. God doesn't speak to you. You're mad. I have driven God from my house, eh? Eh? Oh, 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 oh. So God doesn't speak to me anymore, eh? Eh? Come. Come. Eh? Yeah. of Jehovah. That's the wind, Saul. It's the voice of Jehovah. It's strong. 
Ahinoam, Jonathan, do you hear the words of Jehovah? Do you hear them too? Hey, well, answer me. Now, but Saul shall stand fast on the rock. I have bequeathed to you my judgment. And to those who succeed you, I will grant my justice. Ah, Saul will last as long as the moon. Saul, stretching from sea to sea. Saul, the, the Philistines are within two days' march. What are those Hebrews doing here, Akish? That's David. Haven't you heard of David, brother? You're mad, Akish. He's been in my service for nearly two years now. Saul hates him and fears him as a dangerous rival. Why do you think I asked you to band together now to wage war on Saul? Now that David Wait. is with us. Are you so sure that David is with us? For two years, I have had no reason to doubt his loyalty. Don't be naive, Akish. Once a traitor, always a traitor. Have this man and his warriors sent back, and they will not come with us into battle. He could turn against us during the fighting. But I've told you, Saul hates him. And you don't think he could win back Saul's favor, Akish, by offering him our heads? Send David back to the camp. Believe me, brother, I'd rather give up a thousand of my chariots. David and his men are no longer with him. It seems David has left the Philistine camp. It'll be a clear day. If anything should happen to me, Abner, if today's battle should go against us, Give the signal. Call my sons around you and take them to safety. Remember, you've sworn it, Abner. My descendants, my descendants must reign.
All right, speak. Say what you have to say. Joab. Wasn't it you, Joab, who was afraid that I would lead you into a battle against our brothers? But I knew that Jehovah would save us from that danger. And hasn't it turned out just that way? I know. The Battle of Gilboa concerns us, too. But have you seen the kind of ground where Saul has agreed to fight? No cover. Not even a blade of grass to hide behind. Saul is old and tired. The responsibility for your lives and for the lives of all the people of Israel has never weighed on me so heavily as it does today. Only now do I realize how wonderful was my life before when I was a shepherd with the responsibility of only 30 sheep. Now there are many more sheep and many more wolves around them. You and I are the only ones with weapons left to defend the whole flock. But can I let us go and crush these armies of the enemy just to save part of our flock and rob all the people of Israel of their only chance of salvation? At this moment, none of us in his innermost heart wants to listen to such cold reasoning. But you, at least, in the long years ahead, can have one consolation. You can say, it wasn't your doing that Saul received no help that day at Gilboa. I alone must bear the burden of this decision. And there is no comfort in knowing that the event foreseen by Samuel has been fulfilled. I will continue to grieve till the end of my life.
David. David, I have great news for you. The army of the Israelites has been overcome. Saul is defeated. Now you are the king. David. <clears throat> is lost. Saul is dying. No! We must wait for your brothers. Are you mad, Abner? You want to see us all killed? Who knows where they are? Remember the king's command. You must save me.
thy glory, O Israel, is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you. Saul and Jonathan, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. How are the mighty fallen? Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul and Jonathan, my brother. 